Hello, my name is Dean Blosser. The managers from Hazmat Solutions and I have responded to hundreds of chemical spills, supervised the cleanup of hazardous waste sites, and trained thousands of Hazmat technicians since the early 90s. One of the tools that we rely on daily is the Emergency Response Guidebook. The ERG has been a vital resource for first responders, transporters, and industrial hazmat team members for the initial phase of a dangerous goods incident. The short video was made to outline some of the changes in the 2020 edition. So what changes have been made since the 2016 version of the Emergency Response Guidebook? Special markings have been added to the 2020 ERG to warn responders and transporters to the hazards of lithium batteries. Lithium metal batteries are water reactive and may react vigorously or explode upon contact with water. Lithium ion batteries contain flammable liquid electrolytes that may vent, ignite, and produce sparks when subjected to high temperatures. The illustrations for rail tank car and the road trailer identification charts have been improved so that the first responders can more easily identify low pressure from high pressure and the possible hazards associated with each. A decontamination section has been added to address direct contamination versus cross-contamination and describes the four kinds of decon, gross, technical, mass, and emergency decontamination. Direct contamination happens in the hot zone, while cross-contamination occurs when someone or something was not properly decontaminated, and they come into contact with another person or object in the warm or cold zones. Emergency and mass decon can be done with firefighting and rescue operation equipment, while technical decon will require a systematic decontamination process to thoroughly remove contamination, capture runoff, and minimize the spread of contamination to others and the environment. Due to the increasing number of chemical fires that have been the result of oxidizers, the definition of an organic peroxide has been added to the glossary to reinforce the fire and explosion hazards associated with organic peroxides. For firefighters, the definition of flooding quantities of water was added to the glossary as well. Information has also been added to the ERG to differentiate between a boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion from a high-pressure LPG tank and a heat-induced tear. A blevy has thermal radiation, blasts, and projectiles, while heat-induced tears still have the intense heat but rarely project fragments from a petroleum rail tank car. The UN numbers for chemical warfare agents were removed. The polymerization hazards for certain materials were reviewed, and the guide assignments for some materials were re-evaluated. As part of the 2020 ERG development, FEMSA funded an independent review of the Orange Guide pages. Respected members of the first responder community and hazmat emergency response instructors, in coordination with the Department of Homeland Security, as well as the National Fire Academy, all provided additional guidance. There was a comprehensive review of each sentence in the orange pages, and the result is more detailed information with less general statements. For example, Structural firefighter protective clothing provides limited protection in fire situations only is now Structural firefighters protective clothing provides thermal protection but only limited chemical protection. The isolation distance, sometimes called the hot zone, was formerly located in the public safety section. It is now found as the first bullet point in the evacuation section. Guide 121 was merged with Guide 120, and caution sentences were added for specific materials. For example, ethanol can burn with an invisible flame. Use an alternate method of detection. Each guide page will have a title describing the type of hazardous substance. In this case, the material is a gas, 
with the additional characteristic of being toxic and or corrosive. First responders should immediately consult this section. The primary potential hazard will always be listed first, which will allow for quick, vital decisions to protect themselves and the community. The public safety information is divided into three sections. General information, which describes the initial precautionary measures for those first on the scene, protective clothing guidance, and suggested evacuation distances. In this section, the term isolate means a zone of non-entry. Unless you are properly trained, equipped, and ready to begin mitigation efforts. However, the term evacuate indicates people should be removed from this area if it is safe to do so. For materials highlighted in green in the blue and yellow pages, responders are directed to Table 1. These specific response distances are for toxic and poisonous inhalation substances, water reactive materials, and for chemical warfare agents. The emergency response section is divided into three subsections. What to do in the case of a fire, spill, or leak, and what general first aid measures should be administered until chemical specific information is available from safety data sheets or medical resources. Table 3, which lists protective action distances for the six most common toxic inhalation hazards, are now listed according to the ID numbers. A visual tab has been added to the border to differentiate between green tables 1, 2, and 3. Information about container capacities can be found on page 350, and some of the distances in Table 3 have been revised based on further testing. 13 additional changes for the 2020 ERG will be deferred until 2024. This has been a brief overview of some of the changes to the Emergency Response Guidebook. Please visit our website for a more comprehensive, free training video. And while you're there, challenge your friends to one of our hazmat games. The new ERG game has questions and spill scenarios, while the Hazmatch game tests your knowledge of placards and hazard classes. The HazMonkey game has several levels that will enhance the hazmat learning experience. Thank you for your service to the community, and as always, please stay safe and be well.